and uh, how often should this group meet uh, and how long should these meetings be? Uh, because we are not this, I want you to know up front, this is not a paid position in case you were thinking I was gonna discuss pay plan with you, I'm not. Um, and, uh, and our time is valuable and I hate to waste time and uh, hopefully again, you will find that I don't wanna come across as being curt or, or certainly disrespectful at any time in any way, but I really wanna stay focused. And this worksheet is not for us to go through today. This worksheet is for you to sit down and thoughtfully go through in writing and put down what your, what your responses are to these items. And once we're done, I want them all put together into a document and they're gonna be spread back to everyone. So everybody's gonna see each other's ideas and thoughts on this, on, on this particular game plan. And then we'll start to look for commonality in the messaging or the, the ideas that people have and begin to get an idea of what this will look and feel like as we go forward. Um, and I, I know it's an assignment and I know you didn't come here maybe necessarily for an assignment, but you will find that this will save us a lot of time uh, and energy by taking the time to get your thoughts in writing. Because if we begin to just kind of shoot the shit here, pardon my French, um, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to come out that may not necessarily be that um, important at this moment. Looking at these questions, is there anything else on this worksheet that you would like to see added um, to this that we can add uh, as a group? Anybody have any input there? I have just just one one comment. I I think I'd like to know whether or not we we uh, go through it tonight or at another meeting or is just to get a history of these proposals because the, you can look online since the 2004 committee was reviewing the 1987 recommendations and then there was the plan in 2006 and then the committee itself was dissolved. And I just love to know from anybody with any historicals perspective, sort of what happened you know, or what may have happened. I have my own ideas of, as to what may have happened, but I think that would be helpful, you know, as far as, you know, how we tackle things going forward. Yeah, I agree. I think we could do that, you know, um, uh, succinctly now, or we could do it after the worksheet, but that is something that does need um, to be discussed because the only note I've write, written down so far is um, with Pete Gillespie saying this is the second time around uh, on this. So hopefully the third time is the charm but you raise a great question. Why are we still here? Um, you know, and what were, the, what were the issues that they've had over the last 15, 20 years, frankly, um, that have um, derailed? Um, Pete, I don't know if you, and, and maybe now would probably be a, a, a good idea, and maybe it might help uh, influence some of the feedback that we get from the worksheet. Um, um, can you respond to, to Tom's question? I, I have to go back in the, in the records, but, um... I believe the committee was formed by the council specifically to do this plan. We had partnered with Rocky Hill as well. Uh, as you can see in the plan, it was a multi-town uh, effort. Um, there were uh, some leading personalities. I think the leading personality in Weathersfield's case was Paul Corshane, for those of you who remember Paul, um, who has since uh, passed away. Um, <clears throat> so I think there were some issues related to uh, to that. And um, I, I think he was anticipating the committee was a short term thing. And then the implementation would be handed over to the various boards, commissions, town council, uh, and uh, those kinds of things. And um, I think it that the um, the energy got diluted because of that without a key personality uh, leading the effort. Um, I'll certainly go back and um, do a quick, you know, Reader's Digest version of that for the group. But that, that was my, um, you know, that was my, my version of it. Pete, if, if I can just jump in, I, I've kind of lost track at this point, but um, the, the referendum that came out to allow parts of the Silas Dean to be developed for housing, was that around 2006 or was that, was that a, I'm just wondering there, if it lost steam after that died as well. There, the referendum was um, was to get uh, funding to do the um, Weight Watchers project, um, not not anything to do with housing. I, I'm not sure what you're referencing. I might, I might be I might be yeah. confusing that with uh, Old Weathersfield with Comstock. 
I just, yeah, Gary, nope. so, that was a different effort. Yeah. Yeah, Gary, the only referendum on Silestine was basically put together by the redevelopment agency to buy the Weight Watchers property to then look to bring a developer in to do something with it to get that off the ground. Uh, that's right. That's yeah. The, that's right. In the last hour, because uh, that was pushed through by, you know, the Democrats not to play politics to get it done, but at the last minute, the Republicans came up with a quick plan to do something on uh, Berlin Turnpike to put in housing there and put it on the same time on the same referendum. And as a result of that, we had a lot of people that were in favor of Silas Dean, but were opposed to Berlin Turnpike. And because of it, both plans fail. Uh, the Berlin Turnpike failed by a few thousand votes. The Silas Dean Highway purchase failed by less than a hundred. So that, that was something we almost got through so that if we had been able to get that plan through and buy it, we could have probably started something then that would have brought more development just like the board has done now adding on in itself. So uh, that's just add more history to it. Hey, Mark. Anything, anything more to uh, Tom's um, question regarding on, you know, we've been through um, uh, two iterations right now. Can you add any more uh, to that particular question? I would think the thing would be money. I mean, because, uh, you know, there's only so much of it to go around. Uh, tonight, um, Peter's going forward looking for, you know, funds for facade loan and for startup money to do a study. Um, you know, one's 50,000, the other's 100,000. Uh, in the past, the capital budget's always had $900,000 in the budget. Last year, to come up with a deficit or a, a reduction in benefits, Republicans lower that amount to 300,000 for everything in town. So the chances of that getting through, I don't know, because that also includes, you know, repairing and replacing furnaces and roofs in town, uh, drainage projects. And, you know, there's projects that uh, last year that they got through to do study on a couple of things. And the capital improvement committee, I have to commend them. And I think Gary can back me up on this. They're very non-political. They listen to all departments and all of the requests. And then based on the money the mayor tells them at the first money they, uh, meeting they have, they have to spend, they take all those projects and prioritize them first on safety, then by where they can get, you know, matching funds or whatever to get it done, to get it done cheaper, and then other projects. And once they start a project, they like to see it get done. So if it's being phased in over many years, they like to continue it. So you know, will we get money this year? I don't know, because if the council leaves it at 300,000, you know, there's one drainage project they started last year where they did the study on. My guess is that'll probably get first refer, uh, you know, first preference, and then whatever whatever you know, safety issues there are in there. So, you know, I don't know what our chances of getting money. I mean, Gabe, I know Peter says we put in for it, and you said that's great, but the chances of getting it, I think, are going to be slim unless they're going to raise the money. Gary, do you know if they're going to raise it? Well, right. so I'll, I'll back, yeah, so I'll, I'll back up a little bit. The, uh, the mayor did start the first meeting of last year uh, for his capital improvement and actually bumped it to a million. But then by the time it got to council, it got reduced by 326,000. So they actually put out 574. Um, but so it was a pretty substantial reduction. Um, we're having our first uh, capital improvement or CIP meeting uh, Wednesday. So I'll kind of get an idea from there where the mayor is planning on launching. My, I, I don't know which way they're going to go. My guess, I'm hoping to get them back up to 900,000. Uh, I don't see it being much more than that. Mm -hmm. But I don't but know for sure at this point. Mr. Cindy, is that open to the public? The CIP meetings are, um, are open to the public. The first, uh, the first three or four um, uh, hold on one second. The first three or four are pretty much just department heads kind of giving their pitch. Um, and, you know, deliberation kind of takes place in the last one and then they make a recommendation to council and then the council has it. So yes, they are open to the public. But only for, so much for, the public. Not, not for comment, but just for listening. Yeah. 
But where are we now in that process? If people wanted to, you know, recommendations. Yes. Yep, Wednesday is the first meeting. Wednesday night. Well, we're just starting the department, at, kind of at the department level. Is that where we are? Correct. Okay, thank you. Gabe, I think you had a question. Uh, just uh, two, one a comment and a question, I guess. One of them is, um, well, few. <laughs> so the first is, is that I'm excited about this. And, you know, one of the things is that if we're in the game at some point, you never know, we might catch a tailwind where the way the economy is, maybe at some point in the future, there's an infrastructure bill. And if we have something in place, usually governments like if something's in place and they need to put money in, and if we ever do get a comprehensive bill, I know it's a long shot, but it's just something I wanted to throw out there. So it's nice to have a plan. So if the United States government starts putting money out for infrastructure bills, maybe we're there. That's number one. Number two is, is that, and I don't know how any of this works. I've just been a citizen and vote. I know that um, in some towns, uh, they'll have like a, a vote for, in Glastonbury, they'll vote uh, to set aside extra money to purchase land, you, you know, so that that's a separate vote. I don't know if we if that's potentially in the future, where if there isn't any money, uh, you know, let the citizens of Weathersfield speak, and this is a separate item. And if they do want to invest in their town from that perspective, again, that's just a random thought. And then the last one is, is that I do really like the thoughtful approach that you have, and I'm looking forward to responding. Um, it's just that if there's a time constraint of maybe when we have to do this to get some of the things in to help Peter to pro uh, move it along, um, I'm all for trying to meet those deadlines sooner the better. That's all. Uh, great. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, and, and I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I don't want to use the term shovel ready. Um, but um, nothing is actually shovel ready, but you're right. Having something that's in a pipeline that somebody can, we can apply, if they're looking for money, we can go, well, here's what we've written out. Here's our concept or here's our game plan. So I, I think you're right. And um, uh, I think the, one of the things in the Biden administration is talked a lot about has been um, uh, restructure um, uh, in so um, I think you're, I think the timing could be uh, fruitful. And you're right, tailwind something, I'll take a tailwind any day. Uh, Judy? I, I just yeah. wonder, is there any advantage to uh, this being, or disadvantage, to this being a state highway? I mean, we can't just change it because we decide we'd like to, but um, what is the, the protocol and, and how much gravity does that hold for us either way? And it, potential monies. The the good um, it's it's probably equal weighted on on restrictions on what we want to do, but access uh, to capital um, is the flip is the flip side. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, and Peter, I don't know if you want to blow any more life into that, or Gary on on the pro or con side, uh, it being a state uh, state road. No, I think you 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 summed it up right. There's there's good and bad. It's good in terms of being a state highway, because it opens up some funding sources that are you know, beyond the, the local funding. And then it's bad, you're dealing with the DOT. Uh, they still have a certain um, you know, mindset. Uh, and um, this is an alternate route to the interstate. So it, this route does play an important role in the region. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good and bad. You know, to that point, um, as we look, down the road, one of the tenants and a very great tenant, a long term tenant in the building is the Connecticut Construction Industry Association, very influential in the state of Connecticut. And Don Schubert is the um, chairman or whatever his title is running the CCIA. Um, and they have been in the building there. And, um, you know, who knows what we could do um, to help um, sort of usher this along, but that's something to think about do down the road because he's a very nice guy and, and, and you know, I, I think he would like to see things improve. So just a thought. Um, well, a guy who knows a guy and things like this is important. So um, um, that's good. Don't raise his rent. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can I the, can I add one more one more thing on please. because it goes to uh, the potential for state or federal funding. Um, there was a great article, and I'll circulate it uh, either yesterday uh, or the day before in the Washington Post, and it has to do with Pete Buttigieg, who's yeah. going to be. Did you see it? He's going to be the secretary Secretary of Transportation, and when he was mayor of South Bend. He's a big believer in complete streets and spearheaded a huge project in South Bend, Indiana. So it's, it's mostly about a change of thinking. I think, listen, a lot of this is going to have to do with, you know, who knows after spending trillions of dollars after we get out of COVID, what's going to be available to do what. But, but I think he's going to be a big proponent of changing or at least maybe have some alternative transportation funding ideas. And so if we have a complete streets plan for that road, um, Senator Murphy is on the appropriations uh, committee. He's on the transportation subcommittee of the appropriations committee. He's a Weathersfield native. Rosa DeLauro is the incoming chairwoman of the House Senate, uh, the House Appropriations Committee. So she's maybe not necessarily our representative, but she's a Connecticut person. So I, I think if, if with, to your point, Gabe, that striking one, while the iron's hot, if you have a complete streets plan for the Silestine Highway and not look at, you know, economic development's a part of it, but look at it from traffic calming, uh, like a safety perspective, bike lanes, alternative transportation for biking and walking and making it, a, a um, you know, a mo more of a multimodal road than just people trying to get from exit 24 to, you know, into Hartford or, you know, um, or vice versa. Uh, you know, I, I think that's just things I'll circulate the article, but it might it might it might change a few minds as to sort of what, you know, what what the Silestine Highway slash Boulevard could be. Tom, educate me for a yeah, second. This is, this is oh, a, yeah, I, uh, I came to the same conclusion about uh, Pete Buttigieg uh, and he's, I'm being a mayor of a small of a medium sized city. And that's definitely going to be his his pitch. And Biden is totally in support of it. It would be, I think, interesting too, uh, when we circulate the article to kind of get the language, which maybe uh, it might be using some words that they're using. And so we can, again, sort of strike when the iron's hot. Because I went back when I looked at the trend, the, uh, the Silestine plan from 2006, and I just did a word search. And I think the word bicycle pops up maybe four times in that plan and just in footnotes. And I, I do think that if anybody looking at that today, they're not just talking about, it's not just a beautification effort. You know, it really is a, about a multimodal kind of redesign for, for different modes of transportation. Judy? Um, I was just gonna ask Peter, uh, is there anything, or Gary, anything that the state has already done about the Silestine Highway? Do they have any uh, studies or more than we have? No, they haven't um, focused on the Silestine Highway for, for a number of years. Um, they, yeah, they're doing uh, spot improvements. Um, if you noticed uh, right now, as we speak down at Town Line Road, um, they're redoing the signalization. They're much more ornamental than they um, once were. So that's a positive change uh, in that direction, uh, but they've been doing that systematically up and down the highway. So um, that, that's where I say, since it's a state highway, we can leverage potentially those individual projects to go towards a you know, longer term plan. So when they're doing their improvements, you know, hope we can convince them otherwise to you know, implement some of our ideas at the same time. So that's also- a, and, and, and to what Pete, oh, go ahead, Pete, go ahead. Um, I'm, I just I'm wanted upset. to know who, who, who initiated that, uh, those uh, individual corners, if you will. Was right. it Rocky Hill? Was it Weathersfield? Or was it the state entirely? It's the state. They have, a, um, they have their own capital improvement um, program with individual projects. They, and they do a state uh, master plan, a transportation plan as well. So um, it's probably as part of this effort. It would be some of the background information that we would um, take a look at to see if we can, you know, time our work along with some of the things that they may have on their long term plan. So what I was also going to say, just to echo Pete's comment earlier, I mean, it does 
the good and the bad, right? The good is it also leverages things like federal tiger grants, transit oriented development, responsible growth, all of those would then be accessible to us. Um, so, you know, it is good to have a plan. Um, we'll be lumped in with a lot of other communities who, um, who go after those, but the fact that we haven't had a facelift in a long time and the fact that there is an opportunity because of proximity, uh, connectivity, um, you know, and I, unfortunately I dropped out, I lost the signal and dialed back in when Tom was talking about, uh, booty um, uh, uh, article. Um, there are opportunities that we don't want to miss out on. Um, thank you, Gary. Uh, Gary, just from a staff perspective, um, I know with regards to grants, writings and whatnot, it's an art form. Uh, um, is there, who on staff right now would be responsible for that? And does that person have the time and the capacity to, to if we start turning rocks over on money available, who on staff would be responsible for that? That is a great million dollar question right there. Uh, the, the brief answer is there's not a lot of capacity uh, to do these things. Uh, it would probably be split between, depending upon what it is, someone like myself, Peter. Um, if we're smart, frankly, while I'm not a huge fan of consultants and over uh, reliance on a consultant, um, it may make sense if we're going after those, if we're doing a plan anyway, to help them create a document that allows us to you know, they do the work, they do the research, and we can do a little bit of plug and play uh, in terms of writing those types of grants. Um, I've done them, I've done them successfully, but they are, um, I've never done them as a town manager trying to do everything else. And Peter uh, is also kind of out of capacity. So it, it would be split, it, you know, if, and we'd have to outsource some of it. Somebody saying something? Sure. That was my 11 year old. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I had finished. Finally, somebody's smart on the call. Uh, so the yeah, um, feed, feed that kid. It's dinner time. Come on. The um, uh, from a economic perspective, Pete, with CIP, are we should we think about couching some of that money towards uh, grant writing consultants as Gary is talking about? Or is it too late? or is it not the right venue? I, I think as Tony indicated, every, every CIP uh, funding cycle is extremely competitive. Uh, the one thing we have going for us is last year we passed, we did not uh, ask for, nor did we receive any funding from the CIP. So I'm certainly going to remind the committee uh, that we uh, got a zero last year. So that this year, not that we can make up for it, but just have them keep that uh, keep that in mind. Uh, it's probably, or it, it's highly unlikely we would get the full 150, 100 for the, you know, the planning and then 50 for the facade program. So we're going to have to make um, some choices at some point in time. Uh, I did also ask the finance department to see if we have any leftover funding from previous capital improvement projects. Uh, we did get some undesignated funding some years ago. So there may be some resources out there that we really have not um, discussed before. So I can certainly um, research that too once the finance department gets back to me so I can give you guys a report. Maybe we have some other resources where we can stretch our dollars a little farther. Well, that that is a, you know, as Tony said, you know, it was thoughtful. I didn't know what you were gonna say, Tony. It took you 30 seconds when we asked you and you just went money. I went, okay, <laughs> I get it. Um, but we do with the money that would be available if it, if it is grant money, we need to be really focused on, well, how do we apply for that money? And we need to have a plan for that because if we don't, we don't apply, we don't get. So uh, th that's maybe a, a call that we can have or we can discuss deeper, but Gary, obviously, and, and Pete, you know, you guys on the inside, um, you know, that, that is some, give us some advice or counsel or whatever that we, we should be thinking about on, on what we would need to do to get that grant stuff written. It's a long process. And if you, you know, if you don't do it right, that, you know, it's, you know, you go to the bottom of the pile or you just get thrown into the shredder. Um, so we don't want to have to go through that. Just something that I, I see as a potential roadblock, not a roadblock, I don't like that term, it's negative, I'm very positive. A, a, a hurdle that we need to uh, learn to jump over. Um, 
you know, I, I did have a phone call with uh, with Rocky Hill. Actually, it was a couple different municipalities, and we we're just talking about how to share resources. If we're going to do the Silas Dean, we could try again to partner with them um, about a plan um, and maybe split the costs. Um, those are all options, but um, some of this is waiting for a federal budget to come out too. So, uh, and, and state budget, sorry. Yeah, Cindy, I just had a question because I, I had taken Rocky, uh, the Silas Dinger, uh through uh, all the way to Cromwell, and it looks as though Rocky Hill is tearing up sidewalks and redoing them, uh, kind of widening them and putting a brick overlay on the sides. I don't know if that's uh, state funding or if they have a plan. Um, it might be worth investigating what else they're planning to do. I'm not sure which location that might be tied to development that's actually taking place. I don't know if that's specific to the Silas Dean or the abutting property owner. Like well, I, I don't know if that's on state. Yeah. I'm going to say it was half a mile that they had torn up the sidewalk. And I just, just, just FYI, that's what I noticed this week. Hmm. Good. Uh, this, any other, um, Anybody questions off the top of people's heads? Because I want to get um, or comments. So what I'd like to do is just to go through again the worksheet here. Um, I'm reviewing the questions. Is there anything on here that you think we should add um, uh, and get input on besides the one that we have the ones we have outlined here? I think you know. I guess have one question open ended to that point. You know what I mean? If we think of something a little later on, we could add it to it. Uh, absolutely. If we want a remark section or something at yeah. the end. Yeah, right. absolutely. Uh, if you just want to write that in, any type of remarks or anything in addition. Um, these questions are based on um, other things I've been involved with, and they're, they're all interconnected. There's a little game we'll play. Um, um, it's not a drinking game. I'm sorry, uh, Gary or Pete or me. Uh, it's just a game. Um, I'm interested in getting your input, and I think these questions will be a great way for us to again figure out um, where this where this can go and what what the potential can be. And again, as I said um, uh, at the EDIC meeting last week, um, we don't know. This is you know we have. We have guys from staff from Weathersfield here um, uh, on the call, but we haven't made this a, a an official group as of yet. And I think once we get uh, the input from this, we'll kind of get an idea on where this should be positioned um, uh, in with the town. Um, and again, so at this point, everything we're talking about here is just kind of uh, ephemeral or it's just kind of, we want to bring it down uh, to from 30,000 feet down to um, street level. And that's what this insight worksheet will do. Um, I have nothing else uh, uh, at this point. Uh, the The goal would be, um, uh, you know, I'd like to get this. Today is Monday. If we could get these in by the end of this week, um, if as a matter of fact, if we could get in, say by by Thursday, I can begin to put them together. Maybe by the end of the week, um, and. I, there won't be any slicing or dicing. Once we get them, I'll take it and I'll put it in a single document PDF so people can read each other's notes. I highly recommend that you do not discuss it with everybody. You just really just put down your own thoughts um, and uh, we will regroup um, and go through um, uh, what we learn uh, from each other. Um, uh, and I'd like to get together again within, you know, at least within two weeks, if not sooner, if that's okay with the group. Sounds like a good All right. Um, uh, Mark, Mark, do you want us to send it only to you or do, uh, do you want us to CC the, the group when we send our town? Our um, send it, just send them to me and then I'll put them all together in one document. So it'll be one that we'll all be able to read and, and filter through at the same rate once we go through the meeting. I'll put it in a structure so we'll, we'll all be able to just kind of scan through it and read it as we go through. Um, I guess the, uh, the last thing, anybody on the group is required, you know, with some boards, you're required to make a capital investment. I think we decided $10,000. 
uh, was going to be the number. We can talk about that the next meeting. Um, so I'll just lay that out there for you as well. Uh, Sounds great. Hey, uh, guys, uh, thank you for your time. And uh, I look forward to getting your input and uh, getting back together again uh, within two weeks. Were those small unmarked bills that we're talking about? Or? <laughs> I don't know if this is being recorded, so I'm not going to comment. Thanks, right, Mark. Right. Peace. Have a good Thank evening. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Take everybody. Care. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night, all. Bye. Good night,